Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and this podcast is designed to help you make room in your life so that you can grow your business intentionally. And a vital aspect of business growth is trust. And in part, I do mean helping your audience come to trust you, but also it's all about learning to trust yourself. Self-trust is a central quality that entrepreneurs require because they're always taking so many risks all the time. They're so self-directed and no one's telling them what to work on every day. So entrepreneurs need to trust their plan and their instincts. Now, this is obviously easier said than done. And I know all my entrepreneurial friends at some point just wish they had someone to tell them what to do. Because even the most confident among us have big and small crises of self-doubt. So today I want to tell you a story of my own self-doubt. It's a story of how I got taken, swindled uh, by the same woman two times, and it really made me distrust myself. So no lie, I've been tricked by the same woman two times in my city. I live in Syracuse, New York, which is a small-ish city, but it's big enough to have little pockets and neighborhoods all around the city. And I was heading into a coffee shop with my son, who was 10 at the time, and his two friends, and I was stopped by a fast-talking lady. She approached us in the parking lot with a long, crazy story. I mean, I can't even pretend to give the story justice, but suffice it to say, it involved a broken down car, which I couldn't see. It was down the street, supposedly, Uh, a son in the hospital two blocks or a few blocks away. And she kept pointing toward the direction of the hospital, which I knew logically was farther away than she kept saying. But like my brain could not register what she was saying. She was talking so fast. It also, the story also involved a cell phone that had died and of course, no cash on her. And she was waving her arms. She was wringing her hands. Her voice was trembling. And uh, I remember I have six very big eyes on me, very young eyes on me. And I made a decision in the moment. I gave her $20 and I wished her a safe journey. I hope she could figure it out. And then the kids and I spent our coffee talk deciding whether we had been taken. And we unanimously agreed that we had. But we also decided to feel okay about it instead of angry and ashamed. We kind of talked about what she did. We talked about the decision. We talked about how hard it was to make a decision in that moment because I was reacting. And so we all decided, okay, we're just going to feel okay about what happened, not angry or ashamed at ourselves. And then fast forward two years, this other this, this thing happens. I'm alone this time. I'm leaving my hairstylist, heading to my car on a different city street like so a completely different part of our city and it's drizzling and I'm kind of distracted because I don't want my newly blown out hair to get frizzy and this time again a woman approaches her arms are flailing she's talking very big she's talking very like fast at me and she's got a big complicated story again and this time she's in my face she's much closer to me and I'm just standing right next to my car and something about her feels familiar but I I feel overwhelmed and I can't place it and again I react because I feel bad and I want to help and I don't know how to take all that she's saying and filter it in my brain and so I give her $20 She flies away from me. I get into my car and the moment I close the door, I squeeze my eyes shut and I remember, oh, I remember standing outside that coffee shop with the three kids and I think, damn it, she got me again. And I'm wondering like, why do I give $20? Because because that's usually all I have in my, uh, if I have any cash at all, it's usually a 20 and I never seem to have ones or fives on me. So I just gave her $20 twice. She got me twice. So writing this out and telling this all to you, I I thought, is this embarrassing that I got scammed twice by the same person? 
because we've all felt taken advantage of at some point, especially online, right? Whether it was the beautiful bag that you bought off Instagram, that's an obvious piece of shit when it arrives at your door, or a car, a course that you bought that didn't serve up all it promised, or it, it didn't quite meet your needs as it had it said it would. The thing is, we've all been there. Uh, there's no shade or shame necessary. And this is why it's vital to create the no like, and trust factor. That's what it's called. Especially if you're a new entrepreneur, this might be a new concept for you. No like, and trust your audience needs to know, like, and trust you. And I'm going to be talking about that later in the month, but today I want to talk about the trust factor with yourself. I want you to think about how you can earn back your own trust because this is the craziest thing. That lady, she literally showed up at the tar- the Target parking lot in a totally different part of town, in a suburb I was in last weekend. And she came at me with her same fast talking ways. And she had the bit, it was the big purse that got me. I'm like, oh, I know this woman. And this time I tuned in in. I like let my kind of spidey senses go on and just say, Jen, hold on. You don't need to react. You can respond. Just sit and listen. Because I tuned in and that's when I knew I recognized her from somewhere. I knew something felt familiar. And it was because I was actually laden down with my bags. And I also had my big COVID face masks on that I had a few moments to just slow down. I didn't need to rush in and give her money. I took my time and I listened to her story. I didn't react. And then I remembered her, that same giant red purse, like it all went off in my brain, the same giant set of car keys jangling in my face. And I thought, aha, not today, fast talking lady, not today. And so I simply said, oh, I don't have any cash. And she dropped me like a hot stone and then went to another car in the lot and did the same thing. I calmly got in my car. I called 911 and told them what I knew and what I was seeing. And then I left. And I felt good about it. But I wanted you to understand like this is self-trust is a journey because learning to trust ourselves that that can be a slower process than sometimes we'd like it to be. And it's hard to trust ourselves if we've been for a long time denying the things that we want for ourselves or living with guilt and shame about something or believing that the other people in our life deserve more than we do. And I started to think about it. I realized that I usually feel guilty when someone else is in trouble. And if someone else needs help or money, I have this long running script that it's my job to help that person because, you know, I have so much already. I carry around a lot of guilt around that. I work on this all the time, but I kind of should all over myself. Like I should be giving more. I should be helping more. I should be giving away my money, right? And so that's why I react so much more often instead of being measured and responding. So this is a lesson I've learned. (laughs) It's a $40 lesson. (laughs) And I wonder if you have a couple of these lessons in yourself. And frankly, I could like, I could honestly stay on this podcast for hours telling you about all the dingy things that I've done where I didn't trust myself. And I just uh, handed something over that I shouldn't have, whether it was power or time or money or help, right? Or energy. And so I wonder if there's some place in your life where you're not trusting yourself. Like maybe you don't trust yourself to pivot in your business or you don't trust yourself to charge more or you don't trust yourself to expand to the next level. You might be waiting for the exact right moment and the exact right strategy, but I can promise you that doesn't exist. There is no exact right anything. Or you may be waiting for someone to tell you what to do because you don't trust yourself. I promise that if you don't trust yourself, you will never feel ready to make any leap. And in fact, maybe there's been somebody that you've wanted to hire with your business to help you, a designer, a coach, a website brilliant, a brilliant website person. And frankly, maybe you haven't hired that person because you don't, it's not that you don't trust them. It may be that you don't trust yourself. Like, okay, I'll pay to have this thing done. And then what am I going to do with it? Maybe nothing, right? So this week, I'd love for you 
to get honest. If you don't trust yourself, you'll never feel ready to make any leap. So try some low risk self challenges where you do something because you feel like it. Learn to trust yourself. Slow down. Because once you do, I promise your confidence soars and you're going to be so incredibly grounded and your business will be able to grow with more flow because you'll be grounded and confident. Plus life will just be a hell of a lot easier and more enjoyable. I swear. Let me tell you from firsthand experience. One last thing, speaking of trust, you may have noticed that if there's something you need, like to buy a new car or hire a contract or even find a new babysitter, one of the first things you do is ask your friends if they have someone to recommend. This is called social proof, and it's vital to help your audience come to trust you. So as an entrepreneur, you can feel uncomfortable asking for social proof from those who've worked with you. It can feel yucky, but it doesn't have to be. So that's why I created a step-by-step process to help you get the social proof that you need to help you get the testimonials, reviews, and feedback that'll help grow your business in an authentic way with social proof that matters to your potential clients. That could be like asking for podcast reviews, Facebook uh, recommendations, Yelp or Google reviews. It's all vital to your growth as an entrepreneur. So you can download that. It's a free gift and it's at www.jenliddy.com forward slash ask. A-S-K, all lowercase. So go and download that and then actually trust yourself to put the process in place and trust yourself that the reviews that you get back will be wonderful. That might be something keeping you from doing that. I promise you people want to rave about you. They just don't know how. So tune in next week when I'm going to keep talking about self-trust and how to garner the trust of your audience with some really specific tools. And I appreciate you being here. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.